this is going to be a quick and fast how-to video on uh, updating transaction forms. Not to be confused with PDF and email template forms, but transaction forms. So right now, uh, let's take a quick look at the video. We're going to navigate to transaction forms. And when we think about transactions forms, we're talking about purchase orders, sales orders. But today, we are going to look at our vendor bill, our vendor bill. So I'm going to open it up. And what I like to do too also is I like to actually open up the actual form on a different window. So I like to open up the actual form on a different window and you can do that by clicking the link versus the edit. So let me do that. And then I'll move this over and I'll bring that over just so I can see the updates as we make them real time because I can just refresh the other window. And so as you can see, this is the vendor bill and there's a print template, the email template and an email message template and GSI will put out some quick how to on um, updating those. But for now, I'm going to focus on the screen fields, the actual fields in which you enter information in as you create the transaction because that's what's important to us and as you can see here since we're talking about a vendor bill um the first thing um, is vendor bill in some industries they call it an invoice a voucher so that's the first thing i'm going to do is i happen to be on some of my other clients i'm going to make that the first thing where they say reference number but one of our many clients they like to call this a voucher Next, I will, just from memory, we're gonna enter the voucher number, the actual vendor. So I'm making that the second field that I want them to see. And then I'm going to move up the amount. I'm going to move down the form. I want that to be somewhere else. Um, I'm gonna move the account down. So just, just for, for, for sake of clarity, the changes that I have made was to change the actual label because it was reference. Now it's going to say voucher number. I'm going to change the order. And remember when I actually opened up the look and feel of the vendor bill on a different window? So as you can see, the form was there, the account was there, the vendor bill number was there, and I've now moved that stuff around. So with that being said, I will save my changes. And the, oh, and the other thing I did was instead of having a reference number, I changed that to voucher number. So the first thing that I wanna do in my new form is to put in the voucher number, the vendor, oh, and you know what? and the date, the voucher number, vendor, date, and amount. That's what I want to see first. And those are the things that you would normally see in when entering, um, at least for this particular form, making the change. Now, the other thing we didn't talk about were field groups. Notice that this is everything in the primary. We also have a, uh, a classification, and this is when you get into the line level. Um, so the, I'm just going to focus today because I did want this to be a quick video on making modifications and saving it. So I'm going to save my changes. Once I save my changes, I'll refresh the screen. So now that the changes are saved, I'm going to refresh the screen. And now you can see the order has changed. I have voucher number because that's more important to me. And notice one of the things I didn't show was there's an asterisk, which means these things are required. Another thing we can do in the fields is make fields required or not required in addition to moving them around. And so that's the quick and dirty. Now, next up, uh, look out for the video on translation. One of the things that I wanted to talk about in this video too was NetSuite can handle translating objects to different languages. There is one exception 
there is one exception. Forms are done a little bit different than the other objects like roles or safe searches. And what I mean by that is this. If I were to change the language by going to my preferences and changing the language from English to Spanish and saving it, unlike unlike other objects, the actual translation itself is within the object. And what I mean by that is when I refresh, notice everything now is in Spanish. My form is in Spanish. And if I were to click on customizing my form here, that's what I'm going to do here. Notice that the fields and everything is in Spanish, meaning um, if I were to change back to English, you would see the labels in English versus when I change it to Spanish, you'll see the labels in Spanish. And so that's what that is what I mean by the translation is in the object itself as opposed to if I go to a role, I can see an actual translation field and see the actual English and the different translation translation version of the name. Just a little bonus I wanted to throw out there as it related to translation. With that being said, uh, stay tuned for some more quick how-to videos. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you.